Time for Game Changers Draft Edition brought to you by the maker of Right Brand Bacon. And it's time for some of these players to start bringing home the bacon. Or is it? One of the latest headlines, Zach Mettenberger, one of 10 prospects who got hit with a positive drug test at Combine. It was a diluted test, but still a positive. If you put your GM hat on, how does this impact his draft stock? If it impacts, I'm going to do my homework right now. We know what he did at University of Georgia to get kicked out, had a sexual battery deal there, ends up going to LSU. Kept his nose clean at LSU. Now, if this test comes back where it's just diluted urine, he's fine. But if they test that B sample and there's marijuana in that sample, then there more red flags come up against about Mettenberger. Now, the questions that you have about him are all off the field because he's looked very, very good, especially the last two years down there for LSU. You have to go and do your homework now. Now you call Cam Cameron. You go call the other coaches on staff. You call the other quarterback coach and the position coach, and you ask, what kind of guy is this? Teams are now going to do more homework on Zach Mettenberg in the next 24 hours than they probably have in the last two weeks. Well, his physical therapist says the reason why it was diluted is because he's been drinking a gallon of water a day, <laughs> just like you do, because he's been dehydrated. So we'll see what the league has to say about that excuse. Let's move on to the quarterback protectors. A lot of folks are saying they're going to be five to six offensive linemen that go in the first round. Greg Robinson, Taylor Lewan, Jake Matthews getting a lot of the hype. But as a former running back, there's another guy you want to advocate for. Yeah, one of those inside guys, guard. Xavier Suofilo from UCLA coming out early and we all know that the inside zone is the most important run in the NFL not just that inside pressure is what you want to avoid they want to keep people out of that A and B gap and he's the type of guy that can do that can play both guards also played tackle at UCLA very versatile very athletic he's a guy that will go high in the draft and will play a long long time in the NFL I'm taking this water back because I'm afraid you're going to start drinking might, in the I middle of might. this segment let's talk about defense the the conversation ensues as to whether it'll be Jadavion Clowney or Khalil Mack that goes first but if you project ahead 10 years specifically regarding Mack the great Buffalo pass rusher what do you think will need to happen in order for us to say that he will be the defensive star of this draft well see I personally feel Clowney is the best defense defensive player in this draft. Max one step behind him. It's one and one eight. So I'm telling you, Mac, just because he played in the Mid-American Conference at a smaller school like Buffalo doesn't mean anything. He's a fantastic football player. If he goes to a scheme that's 3-4, that's tailored for him, where he can come off of the edge, put his hand in the dirt, he'll have a fantastic career. He can also have that playing in a 4-3, but his type of play is one that needs to come off the edge on a 3-4 where they have four linebackers, they can drop him off in coverage. If he gets to that type of system, Khalil Mack can be a perennial Pro Bowler. Justin Gill Gilbert is another guy who a lot of folks say have a bright future in the NFL. Of course, the cornerback out of Oklahoma State. If the draft only contained Big 12 players, where would he land? That's a segment you can also see on CampusInsiders.com.